and Warm Trophy Kids presented by Bad News Media. It is the NFL Wild Card Preview Show coming to you at a little bit of a different time due to my ever so battle with Spectrum Internet. But uh, we, nonetheless, we have made it to the NFL Wild Card Weekend. <laughs> we are here. Shout out Spectrum. Yes, shout out Spectrum. Be nice if you could get my internet running consistently. Uh, <laughs> but before we hop into the games, I, I think we got to touch on the fact that are we in the midst of the largest coaching upheaval in our lifetime? Like we're 30, 31 respectively. I don't know if I can remember a time where there were these many key coaches leaving different organizations. We have the two goats retiring at the same time. You have a plethora of jobs opening up in the NFL. One was filled today with, with Mayo stepping into the Patriots role. Like this is just crazy. Yeah, a lot of openings. I thought it was funny also how it went. How did this order go? So first it was Pete Carroll, and then Nick Saban was like, nah, let me take that thunder from you. And then Bill Belichick the next day was just like, nah, I'm going to take the thunder from both of you. That kind of made me laugh. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 interesting. Um, I think someone like Pete Carroll could totally keep coaching and could coach again. Um, but it, it only seems like you know out of all these coaches that were fired, probably two will get jobs in Rabel and Belichick. I, I don't think any of the other fired head coaches are going to be head coaches anywhere else. Um, so I, you know, we'll probably see some, some new coaching blood this off season. I would agree with that sentiment. I don't think a lot of them are coaching next year at, with the exception of those two. I did get a giant chuckle though, because college football fans are out of their ever loving mind and I dabble in both worlds. And I did a video talking about possible candidates for the Nick Saban job in a course, like 50 people were like Bill Belichick. I was like, no, <laughs> he's not going to the end or college I mean, to deal with the headaches of the college football realm. Are you out of your mind, Alabama fans? <laughs> right. And just like, think about the, the yeah, obviously he's not going to just deal with the total headache that the transfer portal is and everything, but just like, think about, I mean, what he would be inheriting. Like that's unbelievable pressure. Like you basically just have to be, you know, Patriots Bill Belichick when you get there in order to like keep that what their expectations are. Yeah. You're going from spending what 24 years as a head coach, coaching grown men, to let me try to get this 18 year old to commit to my university. And oh yeah, there's no structure around free agency or recruiting or like anything really. Are you out of your mind? Like, no, he's not going to they asked me about Pete Carroll too. I was like, what are you guys talking about? No, Pete Carroll would not survive in college, today's college, in my opinion. And yeah, you think Bill Belichick wants to deal with like kids not going to class? Are you kidding me? Yeah, you got to go to home visits and sit on somebody's couch and try to convince this 17 year old why he needs to play at Alabama. Terrible idea. <laughs> what are you about? Um, I will be interested to see where Bill lands. Any, any spe- early, too early speculation if he decides to continue to be a head coach? I mean, there's always, you know, we've heard the Chargers rumors. We've heard Panthers rumors. I've recently heard that the Falcons apparently over the last like three years have just been enamored. I mean, obviously, you know, not that surprising. I mean, probably the greatest coach of all time, even, you know, Joe Gibbs uh, won three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks, not out of whom are in the Hall of Fame, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> we'll just go ahead and give it to Bill. Um, <laughs> Putting my hat in the right yeah, Paul I, Brown. Yeah, greatest yeah. coach of all time. <laughs> started two right. NFL franchises. <laughs> Historical. Has um, Bill started an NFL franchise? No. Not not <laughs> that I'm aware of. Nope, he has not. Um, so yeah, I've heard those three so far, but I, I mean, who knows? I kind of like Atlanta for some reason. I the, I had not heard that. I I initially led the uh Chargers, you know, charge because it felt like a natural, you know, fit. He doesn't have to worry about trying to draft a quarterback because that that was a one hit wonder type of deal um, as far as drafting QBs go for Bill Belichick. He just has to focus on revamping a defense. And you've already kind of got a, a guy that's your franchise quarterback Panthers. I automatically threw out because Tepper's a maniac. He's not succeeding power, but the Falcons, Arthur Smith, I think would be totally cool with su- being like, yeah, you, you take it over, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, they're Arthur blank is he's getting old. He's getting desperate. He wants to win. So, yeah, I could see it happening. I definitely said Arthur Smith. I meant Arthur. Yeah, Blake. you did. That's okay. <laughs> Our listeners are familiar yeah, I mean, with my, my naming inabilities. Oh, uh, Yeah, I mean, the confusion there actually did correlate, though, so that's okay. Yeah, it's fair. And they've got some decent defensive talent. So be interesting to see where, where they head. But we got some football games to talk about. And up first is a good one. Browns, Texans. The line is at two over under 45 and a half. Browns are favorite here heading down into Houston. 
Look, C.J. Stroud has been an absolute monster this season. We know this. This is a relatively young team going against a team in the Browns that for the first time in the expanded playoff era will be without their week one starting quarterback, their week one starting running back, and their week one starting tackles. So what do we make of this matchup? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy what Cleveland's been able to do. Um, uh, this is one of my favorite plays of the weekend, actually. I love Cleveland in this game. I just... The defense is just, it's so nasty. Uh, the Texans, they're not going to run the ball because they can't run the ball. So it's just, it's basically just going to be passing nonstop against the Browns defense. I just, I worry about that. Obviously it's home. Stratus shown, you know, he's not, he's not, you know, like a typical rookie, but I still worry about that. Um, Joe Flacco, I, I don't think this really matters that much, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway for the people. I believe he's five and a wild card weekend. Um, so yeah, I, I feel, feel pretty good about the Browns here. Just, what they've been able to do this year, they've just been so relentless. They've played, you know, tough schedule, much tougher than Houston. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like Cleveland here, and I, I I might be my favorite play of the weekend. This defense is absolutely insane. Like, there are some numbers that skew it, and that is because they allow, like, the explosive play here due to missed tackling, which I'll talk about in a second. But they are allowing the fewest drives to enter the score right now. Second fewest dead air yards through the air. Fewest yards per play allowed right now on that defense. They play a ton of man. They get natural. Miles Garrett is just insane. Like, I know TJ Watt has the sack stats, but when you watch him, Miles free. plays, like, very carefree. He will he doesn't care about his numbers. He'll run a stunt to get another guy on the defensive line open. Like, he's all about the team. It's it's unreal what they're doing there. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, I mean, TJ Watt, obviously, the numbers are there too, but just watching Miles, he's just the, He's a different athlete than pretty much everyone in the NFL, in my opinion. Yeah. The one concern I have for the Browns is they do need to tackle better in open space. The Texans are 13th in um, receiving yak yards, 15th in rushing yards per broken tackle. The Browns have had some tackling issues, which has given up some explosive this year, but you also hit the nail on the head. Like the Browns can attack you vertically here. Texans are giving up the six most net yards per pass attempt. Joe Flacco is stepping in 7.4 yards adjusted air rate, 9.3 intended air yards per pass late. That ties the Texans at number one since he has stepped into this organization. They have a vertical passing path. I agree. I like the Browns in this spot. Yep. Dolphins Chiefs, and this is the first game where Mother Nature is going to have her say in what might be one of the most psychotic events you could ever go to, because I think the last I checked, I saw that it could be negative 30 windshield at some point. Like, I don't know what people are doing. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Um, apparently, the tickets to this game have gone down on quite a bit. I wonder why. Um, <laughs> like, that is, like, I, I know you want to, like, point out like the angle that obviously the dolphins are you know a warm based team but when it's negative 30 i wonder how much that even matters like it's not like the chief to be out there like oh negative 30 this feels fine um <laughs> so I, mean, I don't know how much of an impact that's going to have but i do think there should be there'll be a little like a little bit of an impact like i do think it matters that tua is from hawaii he played football at alabama in the sec and he plays in the NFL in Miami. I, I actually do think that kind of has a role. I mean, same thing like with Jalen Waddle. He's from Houston. He played at Bama. Now he's in Miami. I, 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 it does like they don't really. They've never really been in a, you know, lived in a cold environment. So I do think that kind of matters. Tua has also lost his five coldest games in the NFL. Believe it or not. Um, and I, I think that that stat is a little bit more specific than the Flacco static throughout there. So I do think that also matters as well. Um. So I, I lean Chiefs here because I just I I think the only way the Dolphins have a chance is if they get out early, and, and I just I, I don't, don't know if I see this being a high scoring affair just with that weather. I, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be brutal. But one of the best angles I think is gonna be just looking at the coaches on the sideline. Andy is gonna have the biggest poofiest red jacket, and McDaniel's always looks funny on the sideline. He's gonna be so bundled. He's gonna look hilarious. I think it's gonna be a fun game. We're getting walrus Andy this weekend for oh, yeah. sure. Where that stash oh, yeah. just becomes just walrus tusks at a certain point. Like that is that's for sure happening. Um, to harp more on that stat, you can expand it out even further. Dolphins are 0 in 10 in their last 10 games where the weather was below 40 degrees. Now, granted, they played close games in Buffalo during those circumstances, but still not have not won a game in their last 10 appearances when the weather was below 40. Um 
I feel bad for the Dolphins because that D is just so torn up from an injury yeah. standpoint. Like, if even if this was normal weather circumstances, I know the Chiefs are down, and towards the end of the season, they seem to be limping into the season. But that's mostly because we're comparing them to years past. They're still a fine offense comparative to this year's crop of offenses. Um, you have a Dolphins o- or offense, though, that is third best in converting drives into scores, first in rushing yards. Chiefs are a little susceptible to the run. I would assume that the, the Dolphins are going to try to fire that up this week. Um, but then you have a Dolphins D that, like, I, I don't know how you, like, Travis Kelsey has mismatches all around the field. Like, I, oh, yeah. I don't know how they bring it because, I don't know. I, I, I struggle to see how the Dolphins can pull this one off just because of how injured that team is right now on defense. Yep. Um, Steelers Bills, another giant weather game. Uh, line is at nine and a half over under 34. We might get a lake effect here and some heavy, heavy snow. This we're going to have a wide range of opinions on every platform about whether every team should play in a dome. or We should have these weather games. I, for one, the minus 30 is that that's just insane. Like that shouldn't be, but I like snow football. I like the different environments. I like the outdoors and stuff of it. But there will be plenty of takes on on that for sure. <laughs> there will be. But, you know, I mean, it's how the game has been played for, I mean, as long as we know it. So that's just how we should continue doing it, in my opinion. Uh, but, yeah, I, I can't wait to watch these just weather games and just sit here in my night's warm apartment and just be like, oh, I'm glad I'm not there. Um, this game, this game's an interesting one. It's probably my, maybe the Cowboys, I don't know. This is the Cowboys game. It's probably my least favorite game on the board in terms of just like the matchup and just how I think the game is going to be. Um, it's I look at the Bills and I know they have they have the ability to win this game by 20. But they're probably not going to because they're just they're just they're a bipolar football team. I can't trust the Bills in a big game to cover a nine point spread. And Pittsburgh, they've just they find ways to win. I don't think they're gonna win, but they find ways to stay in games. Um I would take the Steelers here. Um and I they've just been playing well. I mean, Mason, Mason Rudolph looks okay. He probably maybe should be playing all season. I don't know. Um, (laughs) Crazy to say, but it might be true. I don't, I don't have much disagreement there. Um, I I don't know if I like a side particular here, but I definitely think it's worth looking at like a Josh Allen rushing prop or Mm -hmm. like yards or attempts, especially or Josh Allen touchdown. Cause I definitely think they're going to run him when, if they can get into the red zone, you have a bad weather game. This team has become much more less efficient. I will say with with the the firing uh, earlier this season of their OC, this offense has certainly come down in efficiency. But Josh Allen's legs are certainly still a weapon here. He's much more willing to run, especially in these cold weather, sloppy kind of games. So I think I'd probably attack maybe that route as compared to a side. But I'm with you. I don't in a bad weather game. Like, could the Bills win by more than ten? Sure, but like that that feels like a bad place to potentially put your money for the week. Um. Yeah. Hackers Cowboys love this game. Line is at plus seven and a half over under 50 and a half. A classic matchup of Packers Cowboys. I don't feel like it's a playoff unless we get these two clubs going against each other. We have a Mike McCarthy narrative, obviously, with his former team in Green Bay. We have Jordan Love, who since week 11 has been absolutely on fire. We will certainly have the narrative if this is a close game. Is the dumb, dumb Mike McCarthy coming out at some point? Because that is always part of the equation. Um, how do you make this game, or what are, what are you kind of looking at here? Uh, I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but to me, this th- I'm feeling a Dallas blowout. I, I am. I, I I hope. I really do hope I'm wrong. But this team's just been rolling. The way they throw the ball, Ceedee Lamb is unbelievable what he's doing um i mean just looking back at his draft the fact that henry ruggs and jerry judy were taken in front of him whoo big mistake um yeah i i i love the way jordan love's been playing i I just i I worried about his weapons i just think this dallas team is just so much more talented um obviously the coaching angle yeah i I think mike mccarthy is a bit of a dum-dum obviously um (laughs) Those late game management but, situations are just so funny yeah, to me. <laughs> they are hilarious. Um, I, I I would love to see a funny one. I just don't think that he's going to – the opportunity won't be there where he makes a dumb one because I just think they're going to be winning. But maybe not. Um, I do – I will say, if Dallas loses this game, I would definitely say McCarthy is on very much a hot seat. I, I think there's a chance here because – 
both NFC East teams have some tough matchups where there could be two new head coaches in the NFC East next season outside of the ones that we already know about with the commanders. Like there could I be agree. yeah, three new head coaches in that division this upcoming year. Yeah, um, totally. I totally agree with that. Uh, I think it's worth noting too. Jair Alexander got hurt in Wednesday's practice or Thursday's practice. Can't remember. He was a DMP today on Friday. I didn't, I didn't see their final practice report because they wait to release it until Friday evening. He did re-hurt his ankle. If he can't go, or even if he's limited, I don't, I don't know where this, like the Packers defense is getting healthier, but this is a Packers defense that you can run on generally. And that Barry, the defensive coordinator plays a very kind of keep everything in front of you and don't get burned. But if you don't have your best corner out there, he, I don't, I don't know, folks. Like, I do really like Jordan Love. I like the fact that Aaron Jones, the the offense has finally realized, like, oh, he's a versatile weapon. We should use him a lot more than we've been using, and they are starting to use him. This is a super young team. The Packers are the youngest team in the NFL, too, is another thing to consider in this type of environment. Um, One thing I will note is that the Cowboys have committed the second most offensive penalties this year and are seventh in defensive penalties. So if it's a close game, could come into factor here. If you're looking at a live betting situation, you know, you got potential Mike McCarthy game management fumbles as well as penalties as an issue for the Cowboys. But I'm kind of with you. I, I do feel as if the, the Cowboys are are sort of the side here. I, I don't see if they can't win this game. Oof, yeah, Mike McCarthy is uh, done. <laughs> yeah. And as all listeners know, I love nothing more than fading Mike McCarthy, but I I. I haven't pulled the, the trigger here just yet. I might get, we might tweet it out on social uh, Sunday. All right. The narrative game of narrative games, the Rams mm-hmm. versus lions line is at three over under 51 and a half. Of course you have the narratives of Matthew Stafford returning to Detroit. You have the narratives of Detroit having an opportunity to potentially win their first playoff game since 1991. Um, They've got a home playoff game. This is a kind of a miracle, I would say. Like, if Kevin Stefanski and the Browns weren't dealing with what they are dealing with and winning as many games as they won, Sean McVay should be coach of the year because I think everybody who is a non-biased football fan, us included, did not anticipate the Rams would be in the playoffs this year. This was a rebuilding year. This was a bad defense, we thought. And yet, here they are, relatively healthy, with an average defense and an offense that is kind of slinging it, going into a dome atmosphere in Detroit. Yeah, this is going to be a fun game. I'm probably most excited for this game over the entire weekend. Um, Just so many different angles here. You know, you've got the quarterbacks playing their former teams. You know, both of them took the Rams to the Super Bowl. One lost, one won. Um, It's just, it's fun. Um, I'm really rooting for Detroit here. We've seen the Rams, been there, done that. I like seeing new teams do stuff that, like, we've just never seen before. Um, But I I am really concerned about the matchups here. I think the Rams match up against that Detroit defense just perfectly. Um, They can't stop a pass to save their life. Um, And that's going to be a problem because we know the Rams, their passing attack is elite. They've got two, you know, one of the best wide receiver duos in the NFL, I'd say. And even though the Lions are very good against the run, the Rams do have a really good running back. Um, so I am a little bit worried about that. Um, one thing I will say that obviously is on the Lions side, this is a home playoff game. First one in 30 years. It's at night. People have all day to get hammered. It's going to be wild. That oh. place is going to be nuts. Um, so that's going to be very exciting. I mean, the home field advantage, I think out of all the games this weekend, this is the number one home field advantage. Um, so that'll be really fun. I do like, you know, I mean, I do think that their offense as in the Lions, will be able to move the ball against the Rams so I you know I think there's a chance that you know this this could be a shootout and look at it over um I lean LA but I am really really rooting for the Lions yeah three the the calculation changes a little bit for me like when it was at two and a half earlier at the week when it started pop then yeah you I, I think you like the Lions a little bit better yeah Rams at three <sighs> makes it a little tougher I'm with you this rave or this Lions defense Aaron Glenn getting job interviews might be the most shocking development this offseason I did not I did not have that in my projection book with the way this defense is played. They are the 29th best defense when it comes to net air yards allowed per pass attempt. That ain't good, folks. Bottom four. And you have a Rams offense that has had every lucky break this season. Maybe not lucky is the best word to describe it, but it was certainly lucky to get Matthew Stafford uninjured the entire season. This dude is held together by bubblegum and duct tape. You have an offensive line that has been a lot better 
than anticipated. You have Puka, who has set virtually every record as a, for, as a rookie. You have Williams, who has been on this roster for years and all of a sudden has become one of their most valuable assets out of nowhere. Like, it's incredible what they're doing. And you have a defense that I predicted was probably going to be like bottom three in the NFL this season. They're about average. So it's like, I think the worst thing as a Lions kind of fan or backer that you could see is a non-fast start. Like you're not aggressive. Mm -hmm. early. You don't try to build off play action and take a shot against this Rams defense because you do not want the air getting out of the building, letting out of the building in this one. And Matthew Stafford starting to feel comfortable and Sean McVay getting into his bag late in the game. That's a death situation. You yeah. want to get you want to get out early, playoff play action where Jared Goff is the most comfortable, and the Rams defense is overly aggressive against play action. Um, take some shots down the field early, and then you gotta gotta stop the Rams and get them into some third and longs because then you can let that pass rush get after oh, you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's an interesting one. I I want to see where this number goes. I I lean Lions right now, but I want to see the public. This is a week. The NFL, unlike college, the public does not have as big of an effect outside of like the holiday weekends and then these playoff weekends because they're standalone games. Everybody's betting them. Everybody's tuning in. So I'm, I kind of want to see where the number moves on Sunday. Do we get a hook or do we shoot back down to a potentially two and a half? And then I'm going to grab my the, the lines right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would too. Um, Eagles, Buccaneers, wrapping it up on the Monday night show. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, there is no conspiracy. I saw, I don't know what it is with these Green Bay Packers quarterbacks, the, that Kirk guy um, out here going, is is it a conspiracy that, you know, Jalen Hurts gets hurt and then they get the Monday game? Hey, buddy, whoever wins this game has to go play a wood chipper in the 49ers next week on a short week. It ain't no conspiracy. Yeah. Um, I do not like the Monday game. I do not like waiting for my team to play, but we are at a line of three over under 44. The Eagles are reeling, losing five of their last six vibes are way off within that organization. The locker room seems to be a bit of a mess. A lot of questions circling around the coaching staff. It seems like the intelligent people on the coaching staff left the organization last year and yeah. went to Indianapolis and Arizona. <laughs> um, yeah. How do, how are we feeling about this? Yeah, it, it does seem like that is what happened. Uh, <laughs> I would agree. Um, the Eagles are an interesting team. This team was 10 and one and their season total was 11 and a half and they finished under. Um, <laughs> just the worst. Um, I'm glad I stayed away from that total. Uh, it's just it's just crazy how I can't even, I don't know the exact stat at this point. It's 2002 or 2003 that we still, still no repeat winners in the NFC East. I don't that know. That is insane. <laughs> I mean, I was convinced a month ago. I was like, well, this the streak's finally coming to an end. But no, it didn't. Nope. Um, that it's just it's bizarre to me. Um, but yeah, I, I would agree with you. You should be, you know, annoyed about having the Monday night game. If, if the winner of this game is at a clear disadvantage, um, it's they gotta now cross country and go play arguably the best team in the NFL, second best team in the NFL. Um, yeah, not good. Uh <laughs> yeah, but it is kind of funny, you know, we didn't know if your Bucks were even going to get in, and they do get in, and then they probably get the easiest matchup. So that's great for you. Um, yep. I, I like your boys here. The Eagles and that defense is just terrible. So you guys are going to move the football. I You're going to win, agree. Bucks. <laughs> I don't disagree at all. I The one thing that makes me scared is our – our offensive genius of mine still decides to just be run heavy when we are literally averaging the worst net rushing yards per game in the NFL right now. Um, yeah. It's a bad showing, but this is a great, I think prop bets for Chris Godwin and our tight end Auten are fantastic because who is guarding them in this Eagle secondary or linebacker court? Not a no one. <laughs> yeah. And Baker <laughs> is going to be able to feed off that. He does very well with that. You have a, a gunslinger in Baker. He's feeling good. The injuries are a little concerning, but I would make the same argument for the Eagles injuries as well. And a team that, oh, I don't know, can't pick up the blitz and is playing Todd Bowles, one of the biggest masterminds at creating like intricate and exotic blitz packages to defeat you as a quarterback. Like that feels like a bit of a miss a mismatch. Yeah, it definitely does. And I've just gotten the feeling since, I mean, literally since like mid December, I mean, even earlier that the Eagles play players just want this season to end they're just like they've just like given up I, I i just don't think they i don't even think they want to continue yeah it's it's a weird one because 
like it's Kelsey's last season, I would say, and he's the, yeah. one of the heart and souls. I think it's both Kelsey's last season. I think they're both retiring at the end of this season. Um, but he's the heart and soul of the team. So you feel like the offensive line is trying to gun, but they're just, they're not picking up stuff. Well, the wide receiver room is an absolute disaster and mess. And then Brian Johnson, he, I don't understand it because I'm not like, I watch all the games, but I'm not as in tune. So maybe the vibe is a little different in Philly. I don't think it is, but he runs the most simplistic offense. I think I've ever seen like, I could be drunk at a bar and look up at the TV and probably guess the next play just off the package he's running because it's the same stuff every game. <laughs> There's no yeah. creativity in it. It is. And I mean, I haven't heard recently, but I mean, like less than a month ago, there was like head coaching buzz for him. And I'm like, why? <laughs> I, just, I, I just don't get it. Like we don't have a brainiac at OC in, in Tampa land either. <laughs> so I, I, I can't throw too much. It's like, throwing a, a stone in a glass house over here a little bit, but like, my God. Um, and Nick Sirianni is just, just that guy's crap. just, he just plays a role in my opinion. He like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. He's, he's, he's weird. I, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm not in, I'm not into his shtick. Uh, oh, that, I was over his shtick last year and it is, it's definitely when you're losing that shtick gets old oh, yeah. real quick. And then I crack up laughing every time I see the meme of the kid from Elf. And it's like, this is now Nick Sirianni. I don't know if you've seen that. I'll have to send it I to have. You. It's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So yeah, I'm with you. I, I did I did back my bucks. Uh I, I backed him with my heart. I also backed him with my brain because even though we have a lot of injuries, Todd Bowles, at the end of the day, he's still a fantastic defensive coordinator. The type of defense he plays is a huge mismatch for this Eagles team. Like you said, they're not they're not really in this one, I don't feel like. And you've got Baker who just gets the boys going every week. Like they are ready to yep. charge into an ambush. It does not matter. Like if you were a general and you knew over that hill you were just about to get slaughtered, he'd still get you pumped and ready to go. Like that is just who Baker yep. is. <laughs> that is what he does. That is definitely a strength of his, no doubt about it. Um, all right. Any uh final thoughts before we we wrap this up? The final bets we want to lock in for for our wonderful viewers. Uh, no, nothing major. Obviously, I do like the Browns a lot. Uh, um, I, I like your Bucks a lot again. I feel like I've said that a lot recently on this podcast. I like your Bucks. Um, <laughs> and then I haven't even looked. I haven't even really looked at it. But David and Joku's been going off. Maybe take a peek at what he's doing. What 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 figure we're getting for him? And just I, I just this is just only a hunch. Take it if you want. I feel like Jerome Ford's going to score. That's it. I don't hate that. I love, love, and we mentioned this a couple weeks ago, how it took a savvy veteran to finally realize, oh, we have a freak at tight end in David Njoku. Maybe we should utilize him a little bit more. <laughs> we're, we're paying him all this money because we know he's a freak, but his numbers don't show he's a freak. Maybe we should try to get him the ball so he could be a freak. Yeah. yeah. Took, took Joe Flacco to come in and be like, hey, guys, I don't know if you noticed, but there is this freak in nature at the end of my line. Can yeah. I throw it to him? Are yeah, we allowed to utilize like, him? This guy's like 27, 28. I don't even know how old he is, but like, what have you guys been doing? Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm with you. I like the Browns. I like the Bucks. I like the lines if it drops to two and a half. I'll tweet that out, so make sure you're following at Trophy Kids Pod. That kind of game time. I do kind of like the, the Cowboys, but we'll see on that. Josh Allen props definitely would look at those. Um, and then Chris Godwin yeah. and Otten props in my game, I think are are certainly something to keep an eye on because the slot guys against the Eagles defense have been absolutely going off virtually all season. So yep. there's there's your tip of the day. Um, do we want to make a, a too early Super Bowl prediction? Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go Niners versus. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. I think Niners-Bills. I'm going to go Buffalo. I don't hate that. I think Buffalo-Ravens is the AFC championship game, even though you, you're you probably going to get a Flacco-Ravens game, which we talked about weeks ago as being yeah. more's worst nightmare. But I'm with you, 49ers. And then uh, I don't want to go all chalk, but then you get the Bills in the conference championship game. I don't have a lot of faith in John McDermott. So, like, there's a gut part of me that's like Ravens 49ers. I, I'm going to go Ravens 49ers. I hate that I'm going all chalk because it doesn't make sense. But I just. I, They're the most dominant teams easily. They're easily yeah. the one and two team. I'm a sucker for 
Todd Munkin. I put my foot down at the beginning of the season and said the Ravens offense is going to hum like you have not seen before. It's finally doing that. I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm sticking with my preseason prediction that that offense is going to be absolutely humming. Give me the Ravens. I like it. All righty. We will be back next week as always. Peace.